Coming up next, more Americans are looking to move as remote work explodes. And what's the government going to mandate as far as COVID? How will that affect jobs? And we take your calls. It starts right now. All right, here we go. Coming to you live from Ramsey Solution Studios in Nashville. You are joining a conversation about you, specifically who you are, what you were created to do, where you want to do it, and how to get there. We're talking about income and impact. Can you do work you love to produce a result that matters deeply to you and make money? The answer is yes. So we're talking about going from paycheck to purpose. Paycheck to purpose. Life's too short, way too short, to live for the weekend. And so if you're tired of that journey or you're saying, hey, Ken, I'm there, I'm moving, but I want to move faster, well, welcome aboard. So whether you're trying to get clear, get qualified, get connected, get started, get promoted, to get the dream job, you are in the right place. 844-747-2577 is the phone number. 844-747-2577. Okay, no surprise here. We've been keeping you up to date on how the work, life, and work location have shifted, are shifting, and will shift here in America. So, new article from CNBC highlighting that more Americans are looking to move as remote work gains acceptance. Let's take a snapshot of where we are. And I'm going to give you a great resource if that's you. According to this article, almost 20% of people in the U.S. are working from home full-time. This is as of December 2020. And 28% of Americans have thought about relocating since the pandemic started. You've got big companies, Spotify, Twitter, Dropbox, so many more that have already announced They're letting workers work from home indefinitely. And then we're hearing more and more of these stories, so we start to go, wait a second, could I work remote? We've gotten many phone calls on this show. How do I talk talk to my leader about working remote, staying remote, if we come back? So this is naturally going to lead to a boon of people going, wait a second, I moved to this zip code for the job, but now that I don't have to be in the zip code to do the job, where do we, where do I want to live? So you're going to see a lot of movement in 2021 and beyond. And so some of you are going, oh, wait a second. What's that going to cost me to move? Not just the actual cost to load up your stuff and move. Is it a cost of living increase? Is it a cost of living decrease? Am I going to save money? Is it going to cost me more money to be closer to family? Whatever the situation. And so this can lock a lot of people up. Oh, I don't like change. Okay. So how do you walk through this? Well, Ramsey Solutions, we know how to help you manage your money. So if you want an easy way to figure out the price difference between where you live now and where you want to live, I want you to check out our free cost of living calculator. It's really simple to use. And all you've got to do is enter the city you live in right now and then the city you want to move to and your salary. And our genius programmers here at Ramsey Solutions have come up with an amazing tool. And you're going to get numbers that compare housing, utilities, food, transportation, health care, and other miscellaneous expenses between the city you're in now and the city that you're looking at. And you can do this multiple times, of course. It's free. Did I mention that it's free? And most importantly, It's going to spit out for you the salary you need to make in order to be able to afford the relocation. So no longer is it guesswork. And this is what holds a lot of people up. Remember, I've said this a million times. Lack of knowledge leaves this vacuum in our heads, and then it seeps down into our heart, and we get terrified of something that we don't need to be terrified of. So the cost of living calculator, I mean, you're talking about practical, 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 And you could truly figure out, wait a second, can I do this? No, we can't. Better come up with a different plan. Or yes, I can do this. So again, it's the cost of living calculator under the free tools tab at RamseySolutions.com. The Ken Coleman Show, a part of the mothership here at Ramsey Solutions. RamseySolutions.com. RamseySolutions.com. It's under the free tools tab, cost of living calculator. Go check that out. 
844-747-2577 is the number coming up later in the program. We got some uh, Monday momentum updates from you, the people. That's always fun. And I'm going to break down some stuff in the news here that I'm legitimately concerned about. And I think you need to be aware of it because it affects you, the worker. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. So that's coming too. And of course, we're here for your calls. And you can jump in here in the chat room and I'm checking it out right now. If you're watching live uh, here uh, just after 12 Eastern Standard Time, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed and share uh, the show and the episode. All of those right below the video window and just a click of way. I want to say hey to everybody in the chat room, those that are watching and engaging, always love. But once in a while, I'll jump in and pay attention. Let's go to Michael to start us off in Denver, Colorado. Michael, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hello, Ken. How are you? Thank you for taking my call. I am living the dream, Michael. What's going on? So my question, Ken, is how do I ask for a raise from a boss who's absolutely not fond of me? (laughs) Sorry, I didn't expect that part of the sentence. Why is the boss not fond of you? Um, I'm in a small company that is growing in an industry that's very competitive. His leadership style is he's an ultimatum guy. He's wearing the highway, doesn't really listen to the to his employees. He's always right, never wrong, or does just want to hear any input. Mm-hmm. A lot of us in the industry are military, so... Those of us that are military are not afraid to be outspoken or ask questions that he doesn't like to answer. And that's you? We've had a history in the past where we had a confrontation that became a big thing in the entire team where we actually had to have a powwow and everyone had to shake hands and squash because it was borderline of some guys even going physical. I mean, it was really bad. So it just put some salt in the food that didn't sit well and just... From that point on, it feels like it really wasn't settled and some grudges and vendettas are still present from leadership. So Over a competition? Approach, I'm sorry? Over a competition? No, 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 no. Um, just some concerns the way the management and leadership runs the, op- the team. No, and- I, I get that, but I'm trying to be more pinpointed here to answer your direct question. Why doesn't your leader like you? Are you? Oh, I want to know what's going on. I am one of the ones that's most outspoken yeah. and not easily intimidated by him. Yeah, so you've bucked and up. I know being outspoken has bit me in the butt a couple times, but yeah. I hold my personal values and morals at core, yeah. and I'm the guy who's not afraid to ask a question. Why are you and still there? The question is an offense to them. Why are you still there? I have taken your quiz. I am in the right play, um, right job, just the wrong company. So I'm being patient while I'm seeking something else. Then I wouldn't ask for a raise. You don't want to be there. The guy doesn't like you. It's two strikes. I'm trying to think of the third strike, but I just this is a two strike situation here. I I don't know why you'd ask for a raise. What do you think the chances are? Let's say I gave you great advice. What do you think your chances are of getting a raise? Uh, Honestly, I, I don't think he'd, he'll give it to me. I, 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 I what are we doing? Email. What are we doing, Michael? I'm not, I'm not trying to discourage you. I'm trying to push you. I wouldn't ask Correct. for a raise. I, there's no strategy that I can give you. The advice that I would normally give is wasted in this situation. You don't think Correct. that – you're just hoping I'm going to give you some miracle advice and this dude who doesn't like you, you're a thorn in his side – and you think he's just going to go, oh, you got me on that one, Michael. I am going to have to give you a raise. It's not happening. I, I think you're better served looking for something else, as you are, finding it and walk out of there. I'm glad you took the should I quit my job quiz. It's a free quiz, by the way, at KenColeman.com. I'm glad you took it because the results are you're doing the right role in the wrong place. And this is a this is a toxic situation. I don't think that's a... I don't think that's a reach at all. So, no, I wouldn't ask for a raise. It's kind of like, it's kind of like me going, you know what? Joe, should I try to dunk a basketball today? 
at which point you would laugh out loud. Because I can't. It's not going to happen. Should I ask for a raise? How should I ask for a raise? No. It's not going to happen. Why do we do things that we know are not going to happen? I yeah, Look, it's just a deal, folks. It makes zero sense. 844-747-2577. Right here in our backyard, Matt's joining us in Franklin, Tennessee. Matt, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hey, Ken. How's it going? Matt, I'm living the dream. What's going on? So I'm in pursuit of my next job. Uh-huh. And the question for you, I'm going, if I, I'm applying to a company that's larger, they got a lot of openings, a lot of jobs. Does it look desperate if I apply to multiple jobs or should I just pick the one that I think I'm the best fit for? I think it, I think there's probably, this is all opinion. I don't think there's any rule on this. Um, but but I think it it does not look desperate if you're applying for multiple jobs that are very similar. Because, you, you know, if their HR team is looking at this, and let's say you applied for a sales role, then you applied for an operations role, and then you applied for a customer mm-hmm. service role, and all of the roles are 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 fairly different and certainly all across the board. And let's say you applied for seven of those. Yeah, that would be a flag. Like this person just wants a J-O-B in the building. So either they're desperate or they're a super fan. And that's a warning sign. Um, And you've been listening to my show long enough to call me. I think you probably had a general idea what I was going to say. But I I think you got to focus in on your sweet spot. Uh, and if it's not a sweet spot situation, then it's a day job that gets you prepared and gets you on the ladder to step into. So you're talented at it. Um, and it's a good culture and it's what you've got to do to get in, to be able to move up and eventually step in a sweet spot. I'm fine with that, but it's, it, it's gotta be purposeful. It has to be, uh, on purpose. So in that case, I don't know why you would apply for more than, a couple that the positions need to be similar is my point. Is that what you're finding as you're looking at these jobs? Or are you seeing them, uh, these jobs being very, very different as I described? Yeah. Well, I think some of it, I've got, I've got to refine what my sweet spot is because I am in the digital marketing space and there's a lot of different things under the umbrella of digital marketing. And, and so I see a job I'm like, Ooh, I like that. And I like that. And, you know, well, just because I like it doesn't necessarily mean I would excel at it. Well, so, see, that's the whole point. Yeah. So what do I teach? What do I say are the three gifts given to you by your creator, the three qualifiers? Talent. So you got to have the hard skills and the soft skills. Okay, soft skills are people-related. Okay, but mm-hmm. you, you got to have the skill set to pull it off. You know, at least raw talent that with minimal training, you're just up to speed quickly. That's your minimum requirement for talent. Passion is you got to really enjoy, love the work is how I define passion. You love the work. And then uh, it, it's clear to me that digital marketing is your jam. And so if you're doing digital marketing to help people uh, in the way that this company helps people, so you're looking to go, how is this digital marketing impacting the customer? Do I align with that? Are those the results that I can get fired up about? And there's your ding, ding, ding. So if there's multiple digital marketing positions, it comes down to what are the top two for you as you put the sweet spot, uh, you know, the contribution zone layer as a filter over that. And then you go, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to apply for these two because these are really, really similar. Or if there's one that's just a clear winner, if you get in for an interview, then HR, you know, if it, if there's another role in the interview process, that's also equal, then they could move you around. So, your goal is to get in and get an interview. You don't have to apply for seven things. That's my answer. 844-747-2577. Quick break when we come back. Momentum Monday. In the news. Maybe another call. It's just going to be good stuff. Don't move. This is the Ken Coleman Show. Our world is changing, but so are we. Now, we see a smile through someone's eyes. We conquer our struggles and cherish each moment because we are shielded through faith and assured by hope. And greatest of all, we love. 
The world is different, but so are we. Welcome back to the Ken Coleman Show, where we help you get clear, get qualified, get connected, get started, get promoted, get the dream job, so that you can give yourself away. This is how you should see work, not as this, well, it's just this thing I do to live, be able to live. No, no, no. You should see your work as a huge part of your purpose, your why. I think there's just two areas of purpose in a human being's life, relational, professional. And we focus a lot on the professional here, obviously, because it has an impact on the relational side of our lives. Simply put, a woman or man who is on purpose in their work is going to be a better spouse, parent, friend, on down the line. Hey, uh, for those of you who aren't where you want to be and you want to get hired, you're preparing, whether you're starting out, whether you're just kind of, I need a day job to recover, financially, uh, or you're switching. Getting hired is competitive. Think of it as a game, and we've got the rules, the tips, the resources to help you win the game, and we're bringing it all to you in our second installment of Get Hired, which is a live stream event coming up on April the 27th. It's 8 Eastern, 7 Central, live from our Ramsey Solutions headquarters. For those of you that live near the Nashville area, a day drive maybe, and you want to come in, we're going to have a special treat for you. A couple hundred people will be live in our um, lobby area here, and then we'll broadcast it around the world. It's a one-night event. I'm going to teach you really everything in Sages 1, 2, and 3. Get clear. Get qualified, get connected, so you can actually get hired. Tickets start at just $20, $20, and then we have a ticket tier, so there's a lot of more goodies. I signed a bunch of books today uh, for those who've already purchased. It's going to be a great night, and again, could be a good gift for somebody. Again, the event is Get Hired, April the 27th, coming up around the corner. Tickets start at just $20. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash events or Ken Coleman dot com either site uh we'll get you there and then click in the store if you go to ken coleman.com ramsey solutions.com slash events or ken coleman.com in the store go get your tickets all right one of the things we love to do on mondays is we get so much feedback from you the people via email ask at ken coleman.com or social media at ken coleman on instagram you need to be following me there uh, and i do engage by the way uh, over there and so we get these updates that just inspires so many people. So we love to share them. So let's go. It's Momentum Monday. All right, Cassandra writes in, Ken, I was scared to call the show a while ago in fear of my employer finding out. I eat, lived, and breathed your videos and advice, and I'm now in such a better place to fast track. My long-term dreams will be able to buy my first home sooner and make a true difference. Way to go, Cassandra. Uh, I want to point out something that if you're worried about friends or coworkers somehow stumbling across your call, one of the things that we can do and we do on a regular basis is um, in Madison, the producers told the whole team, Amanda, the call screener, associate producer, she's over there. We'll change your name and location. So we don't care. We have no problem. You can get creative with it, right? I mean, we don't care. You can call in, change your name, you know. Maybe you always wanted uh, a different middle name. Yeah, come up with one. Maybe you've always wanted to live this this place. Just come on, I don't care. And so that way they'd have to literally identify your voice. Um, so understand that we want to protect you as well. So call it. Um, this update is from GF. Am I reading this right? Just GF? Okay, it's fascinating. I called two weeks ago about a plumbing position and I got the job. Just wanted to let you know, Ken. Way to go, GF. And then Asia or Asia uh, writes in, currently doing rideshare, but I'm working towards my business idea that I've been thinking and drafting for the last five years. I love it. See, I love that. Here, here's Asia just going, you know, look, I'm actually taking some steps. I'm coming up with some ideas. I'm putting some plans in place to move forward and start the business i've always wanted to start that's momentum that's momentum all right 
It's time for In the News. The U.S. government, according to this Bloomberg article, is preparing an emergency rule to protect workers from COVID. Several observers, uh, primarily legal uh, folks that pay attention to this kind of workplace policy, are paying attention, and this is what it might look like. The Federal Occupational Safety and Health Administration, known as OSHA, is preparing to issue new short-term regulations to protect workers from catching COVID-19 on the job. Most private sector employers in the U.S. must follow rules for workplace safety set either by OSHA or by state-run versions of the agency. Now, this all seems very boring for some of you. You're like, okay, Ken, you just told us about OSHA and COVID protections. Well, here's the deal. You're talking about federal regulation that would force multiple things that employers would have to do, and many of them don't want to do it. And it also costs a lot of money, and it affects their employees, primarily masks in the office, uh, all kinds of other standards. And... Here's the deal. You could be one of these people that go, hey, Ken, I think everybody should wear a mask off. It's great. But what you've got to understand is, is where you've got some people that go, I don't, I don't want to. I feel safe there. Well, it doesn't matter what they think. Yeah, it kind of does because that affects the employer. Here's the point. I, I'm not worried about the, you know, the, the continuous. I mean, it's, it's, it's on the mask thing. You know, it's, I don't know if it's 50, 50, 60, 40, 70, 30, 80, 20. I don't know. I don't pay attention to it. But then there's going to be other things that are going to be implemented, certain type of cleaning. And I don't know if you saw this, uh, but the CDC came out last week and said that um, there is very little evidence of any spread of COVID based on surfaces. So all of the spraying services and spraying desks down and all this kind of stuff. This is what the CDC said. Look it up. So where does it end? And is this the new normal going forward? Every time flu season comes around, we've never done this before. we got a bunch of scared people. I don't know where it's going, but here's what I do know. Uh, anything that comes from the federal government on this has state implications and states choosing whether or not they're going to abide by this and implement it. Um, and you will see lawsuits on this and, and not like people that are anti-health, but just going, look, this, this puts a tremendous burden on business owners. And if you increase costs there, or you have a lot of employees that go, look, I'm not going to do this. I'm leaving. You could lose talent over this. So whatever your opinion is, uh, on mask or no mask, how long you should wear them, blah, 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 blah. You know, who are you waiting on to tell you it's safe to live? Now, I don't know what your position is. I really don't care. And I'm not going to argue with you for two seconds. But what I'm telling you is the Biden administration is pushing this. Something's coming down. This thing will be fought, and it will also be applied in some places, and it's going to increase costs. It's going to cause tension in the workplace. So why do I even bring this up? Because the people still have power. And your leadership in your company needs to hear what you think. Your congressmen, congresswomen, senators, governors, they need to hear what you think. They all care ultimately about one thing, and that is staying elected. Don't forget that. That's my point. I personally, no idea when all this ends. I, I really don't. I mean, like, at, what, at what point, Joe, by the time we get there, in the fall, then what's the next strain? What's the next thing that comes down the line? Um, and I, I got to tell you, I, I think some people will politicize this, uh, not for power, but for, I think you're going to see unions. I think you're going to see a lot of employee organizations. You can see employees individually try to power, try to use this as power to stay home and never go back into the office, which again, all the, all the power to you. But what I don't like is when government gets involved and increases costs for business costs for business owners. Because here's the deal: whether you agree with my opinion on this or not, you cannot dispute the fact 
that when government puts regulations in place that cost businesses more money, those costs get passed on to the consumer, which means it's more expensive for you to live and purchase. And secondly, it cuts jobs. It just does. So you can say whatever you want about my opinion and my philosophy, but I can tell you my reason for it. I want as many people as possible to be able to work, do work they love, excel in that work, and make the difference they were created to do. And when government interferes with that, I'm going to speak up. I'm going to speak up. Let's see what the chat room says, shall we? Uh, let's see. Christopher says, too much federal government control, and it's going to hurt the economy and society. I agree with you, Christopher. Uh, so there you go. Um, do you want to decide what it means to be safe? Uh, or do you want your leaders to decide for you? Political leaders. Now, if company leaders decide to do something, that's that's part of the deal. Uh, I, whether I agree with it or not, that to me, it's like that's the private sector doing things the way they want to do it. You have every right to do it, whether I agree with it or not. I'm, I'm, that's the deal. But government putting it on us, I don't like that. I do not like that at all. 844-747-2577. Let's go. Wow, we got some local calls today. Let's go to Nashville where Nicole joins us. Nicole, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi, Ken. This is Nicole. How are you? I am living the dream, Nicole. How can I help you? Um, well, I currently work for the federal government. Um, I'm also a veteran. Oh, thank and you for your service. Got, oh, you're welcome. It was an honor. When I got out of the service, I wanted to work um, in the VA, a federal sector. And so I got out um, 10 years later. I finally got in, and I took an entry-level position, mm -hmm. very entry, like $30,000 entry. Mm. Um, but I have a master's degree. In what? So in healthcare administration. Okay. And I try to apply for higher positions within the federal government, but due to my GS level, mm -hmm. I can't advance. Yeah. Um, so my question that I battle with is, should I stay with the federal government and try to find like career ladder positions where I can go for, seven, nine, then from a nine, 11, 12. Mm -hmm. I'll go back into the private sector. I worked in clinical research at one time and um, I made a pretty decent salary. Yeah. Or stay with the federal government because of the good benefits and just put it, put as much in my TSP as possible. I think it's uh, very simple to answer that question for yourself. And I have two questions to allow you to do it. Question number one is, do you want to make more money and bet on yourself? Mm -hmm. I like to make more money. Yeah, that's betting on yourself. So I'm going to, uh, do you want, do you believe that you can grow your skills and grow your contribution and thus make more money? Do you agree with that? Yes. Okay. Do you want to be um, stuck in a, uh, in an environment where getting promoted has nothing to do with your output, but all about the politics and the rules. No. Okay. So the answer is private sector, because here's the yeah. deal. You think those government benefits are worth staying stuck mm -hmm. and they're not, mm -hmm. they're just not those government yeah. benefits. Not that great. I don't think it's yeah. worth the trade off. Because the trade-off is you will be promoted way less quickly, mm -hmm. maybe not even at all, because it's so political. And yeah. it's yeah. just put your time in. It has nothing to do with how well you do. But you go to the private sector and you crush it with that master's degree, there's no stopping you, mm -hmm. Nicole. They'll move you up, and you'll be making so much money, so much more money than the $30,000, yeah. that the benefits – Whatever the trade-off is, and well, it costs me a little bit more in benefits, but it's not going to make any difference. You won't even feel the difference. Okay. Yes, that's good advice. I just, yeah, I listen to a lot of people that work there, and they pretty much, oh, the benefits, the benefits. So it kind of, you, know you know why? When you, I'm so glad you brought yeah. this up. Do you know why that they say that? Why do you think I that's don't. what they, yeah, you do. I want you to think about it for just a moment. And if you don't know the answer, if you can't give it to me, that's fine. I'm going to tell you. But I really want you to think for a moment. How come everybody that you talk to that you know that works in the federal government 
that when they talk about why you should stay, they talk about benefits only. Or they certainly lead with that toward that. That's the biggie. Why do you think that's the case? I hear a lot of people say um, it's because it's like a given. Um, they, they know their job is secured. Um, the benefit's going to be there. That's it. That's the reason. Those people are scared to go yeah. through it. They are yeah. all about safe. I just want to be safe. Mm-hmm. I just want to. I just want to keep this pace. Not really looking to advance. I just want average. Yes, and I'm like, are you thinking about retirement? You know, no, they're not. They're just they're thinking not. about keeping the lights on and keeping the table full. Do you want to advance? Yeah. You got a vision for your life, Nicole. I do. Do you I want? Do, do you want, uh, uh, Nicole? Uh, do you ever ask yourself, should I go to an average? restaurant tonight or should i root for an average sports team should i go to an average musical concert do you ever say those things to yourself yes you do yes. uh-huh you want to go you want to go to average things it's well job wise i didn't ask you that job, i'm like i want i want the best yeah that's I know what, what i can offer so that's what i'm saying yes. you you misunderstood what i said you don't say yes. i just want to go to an average vacation you go what well, you want a great vacation no. You want a great yes, restaurant, right? Yes, the best. These people are okay with average. If you're okay with average, the federal government is for you. But if you want to rip the lid off of your life and get after your dreams, then leave. Federal government is not will, where I you will. want to be. I can just tell you. I know I can hear it in your voice. Nicole, it, it comes down to that. Anytime I hear somebody go, well, the benefits are really great. Here's what they're basically saying. And I'm not saying Nicole's saying this, but but this is the mindset that people have. You know what? I'm going to have a pretty average to below average work experience, but boy, do I have some good health care. You're going to need it because you're going to be miserable and then you're going to overeat, overdrink, create all kinds of healthcare problems. Oh, Ken, that's a bit of a leap. Is it? Is it? What do you want to do? Do you want to get to the end of your life and go, you know, as I look back on my career, I didn't really do anything that excited me. Didn't really accomplish anything that mattered to me. But I'll tell you this, I had some great benefits. I mean, they're laughing in the control room, but that's what that is saying. Yeah, I, I didn't do what I was created to do, but I had great benefits. Yeah, when I went to the hospital, you wouldn't believe the amount of popsicles that me and the family got. And and and, and the hospital stay, 50% cheaper than all the idiots that enjoyed their life. I saw all these people living the good life. But then I saw them in the driveway. How much did you pay last year for your health care? <laughs> you idiots. I, I mean, come on, folks. Really? I'm going to have a substandard salary and an average to below average life. But I'll tell you this much. When I start to break down and die, I'm going to die well. I mean, that's what we're saying here. That's crazy. Not me. I, I want the wind blowing through my hair. I want to have a blast. Did, was he pain, Was it painful when you died? Yeah, but boy, it was fun getting there. I don't want to linger anyway. Well, you know, Ken, when I get old, I'd like to know that there's a bed for me. I'd like to know that the bedpan is going to be larger than everybody else's bedpan. A little too soon, Joe? That, that, one got, that was too close for Joe. But, I mean, come on! I'm trying to get your attention here. What are we talking about? Let me tell you what this is about. Anybody that's telling you, don't you leave this job because the benefits are so good, is because they're coming from a place of fear themselves and they're not abundant thinking. They're just not. There's no abundance to say, hey, this is out here if I go for this. So there you go. All right, my time is almost up. But before I let you go, I want to remind you that you matter and you do have what it takes. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, this is The Ken Coleman Show. Press on.